Welcome. Guys, 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 this is of season eight, episode 16. We missed 15 because it's not, it's, 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 it's not, it's not a series. It's not a series. Um, it's, it's, it's like a, it's like a blackest episode pretty much. This big bad like in a fish out of water team challenge. It takes so long. I understand, but we can't do a pinwheel that's got bones in it. The blue team mm. sank to the bottom. Every bite I had had bones in it. Sending them into a pressure test. That's Chocolate truffle. Oh, uh, again, the fucking Master baking. Chef dream. What is this down here? Oh, that's not good. Love you guys. Came to an end. Let's be honest, I don't think anybody cared about Daniel. I don't think anybody cared that he's gone. It is what it is. Um, you won't be missed, pal. Next. I'm in the top seven! Okay, let me get my juice oh, That's Being a preacher, I know. Seven is a biblical number of completion. But my journey in the MasterChef kitchen, it is not complete. I came here to win. You, talented seven, it's time for your next big mystery box challenge. On the count of three, everyone, lift those boxes. One, two, three, lift. What? Chopsticks. <laughs> <laughs> it's a pair of chopsticks. <laughs> it's a pair of chopsticks. There's no ingredients. There is a utensil. That's right, chopsticks. One of the most prominent utensils in all of culinary history. A third of the world's population eats with chopsticks every single day. Mm. They're used to eat delicious dim sum, spectacular Japanese sushi, Thailand's incredible pad thai, all the dishes that become favorites all across America. And tonight, we want to see you create an Asian-inspired dish with your spin. The pantry is fully stocked with all kinds of incredible Asian specialty items. When it comes to conceptualizing your dish, the only thing holding you back is your imagination. Are you all ready to make us an incredible MasterChef worthy dish? Yes, yes chef. chef. Your 60 minutes starts now. Woo! Okay, okay, careful, okay. Get careful. in there. There you go, Woo! there you go. Please, please, please. Broth, broth. Spice, 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 spice. Scallions. I'm honestly feeling a bit nervous. On one hand, I think I have an advantage over my competitors. Or behind you. I grew up in an Asian American community. Oh my god, look at the stuff in here. But on the other hand, I'm feeling like the judges will be expecting me to have a super high level of Asian inspiration for this dish. I need to bring my A game to even have a chance. Here we go. Jason, you're going down, man. Bring it, Kate, bring it. <laughs> dude, how are you still game complaining when we're actually done playing the game? I'm gonna give you a fucking Friday band. Don't, dude, motherfucker, next time I'm gonna get snapped on. Um, I'm making a pork dumpling with a seafood broth on it, shrimp, fried rice, and I'm doing two spicy sauces. As a military wife, I've traveled all over the world okay, with my honey. husband and my children. I've been to Guam, I've been to Bangkok, all these wonderful places, so now I just gotta show it to them on a the plate. How you going, you chicken? I'm coming for your head today, youngin. You better. So we're doing a um, barbecue pork popsicles, and then I'm gonna do pork fried rice over a nice Asian slaw with spicy edamame. I'm really, really excited. Oh, no, I just slide it back to My son and I love Asian food, so I really want to make my son proud. All these seven can become America's next master chef. I Absolutely. mean, they are oh. incredible. Now, tonight, for their mystery box challenge, chopsticks, Asian cuisine. Woo, smelling good already. What we're looking for is not that you get out of a takeout box. We're looking for something imaginative. Yeah, and give it finesse. Yeah, absolutely. It's a great opportunity. To mm, that's pretty good. Demonstrate big flavor, but also a lot of subtleties. You have to think about balancing the wonderful soy, the fermented notes of miso, trying to get a very flavorful broth going if you're going to make fun. But guys, it's about standing out. I want to see something elegant and impressive. So uh, I am making some barbecue pork fried rice with some salt and pepper shrimp, and then I'm going to do a warm pineapple salad. I'm going to smoke some plums. I think this is going to be a winning dish. When I was three months old, we moved next door to a family that was from Hong Kong, and I'm excited to show off my skills that my next door neighbor taught me. 30 minutes remaining, guys. Right, okay. Dina. How you doing, Chef? Now, describe the dish. What are you doing? I'm doing a Thai masaman curry on a mm. bed of basmati rice with a uh, tiger shrimp wonton with cream cheese and mint. 
Cream sort of cheese. Cream cheese. Cream cheese in a Thai curry. It's a very, very small amount. Right. Because I make it every day for myself to try to stay in shape for dance. Just like you, it takes a lot of work to, to, to be what we are, you know? <laughs> I know you're hitting that gym, I can tell. <laughs> what do you mean I'm hitting the gym? <laughs> I know you go to the gym. When we first all saw you, we were like, damn, Chef Ramsey's been working out. <laughs> Good luck. No, okay. That's hot. Jason. Hello, Chef Christina. What are you making tonight? Two preparations of dumplings. One okay. filling has pork and cilantro with Chinese chives, and the other one is going to be shrimp with pea shoot. This is a bit of an homage to my grandmother. I've seen her do it a million times because she comes from the northern part of China, Beijing, and their wheelhouse is steamed buns and yes, dumplings and ravioli. So I really want to go back to my roots a little bit, take it to the next level. Right. Thank you very much. <laughs> Jeff, what's going on, young guy? Having fun over here. Well, that's a good thing. What do you got going on? I'm doing a Vietnamese pho for inspired for my brother-in-law right here. Okay. This is an incredible broth that has peppers. I got onions, got some garlic, some shallots to give it a little bit more depth to it there. And I'm going to be doing the uh, noodles in just a little bit. OK, so what is going to be the protein in your pho? So I've actually got a uh, filet mignon that's going to give a nice little lightness to it there. We've got a skirt skate that's going to give it a little bit of fatness. And then he did a pork meatball. Wow. So this is going to be nice. All right, Jeff, stick with it. Sounds All right. Like good luck. Thank you so much, Jeff. That's a meal. Just under 16 minutes to go. Hallelujah, it's smelling good. <laughs> Gabriel, young man, where we going? Yes, chef. So, chef, today I want to do my take on a Vietnamese pho. That's going to have prawns and a beef base, and then it's going to be topped with a lot of fresh herbs. It's one of my favorite dishes. Something fascinating. You no longer look the youngest in this competition. You're starting to rise. Say you win this thing. America's next master chef. You're 19. You're not going to open a restaurant. You need experience. Yes, so chef. What would you do with a, a quarter of a million dollars? First and foremost, I take care of my parents. You know, get them into a uh, decent house, put some in the bank, and uh, you know, get myself in a culinary school. Culinary school. That's where I'm passionate about. So that's what I want to do. Yeah. Well, your head's in it to win it. Thank you, chef. Good luck. Get your hands on that advantage. Let's go. You got it, chef. Just under seven minutes, guys. A house. Wow. I mean, it smells incredible, right? It yeah. sure does. Uh, Dino. Dino's doing. In LA, to win the game, you get three planks. That's it. Mm, that's my curry. So it's a Thai take from a Persian style curry. But the weird bit: deep fried cream cheese in a wonton with a shrimp. It's either going to be incredibly disastrous or something quite mind blowing. Absolutely. And then, guys, we can't forget about Jason. He's really focusing on elevating the classic. He's making two different types of pork dumplings. He's got a beautiful broth. He's working on the side. Come on, Jason. You can do this. I'm hoping for a lot of elegant flavors. 90 seconds remaining. <sighs> Finishing touch, finishing touch. Woo! Come on, guys. Let's go. Remember, a huge advantage for one of you. Come on, guys. Presentation, presentation, presentation. 10, 9, nine eight, 8, 7, seven 6, six five, 4, four three, 3, 2, 1. Let's go. That was good. Yeah. Well done. Now, while you worked at your stations, we watched you cook, and we tasted elements of every single dish along the way. There are three dishes out there that we are really intrigued by. The first home cook was able to create a plate that is the epitome of fusion. Please step forward. Yeah. There are three Asian dishes out there that we are really intrigued by. The first home cook has never won a mystery box challenge before. Please step forward. Dino. Dino. Oh, Dino. Okay. Oh, yes, baby. They call my name first time in the top three of a mystery box. I feel like I won at life right now. All right, Dino, what's the dish? The dish is a cream cheese mint and tiger shrimp wonton on a bed of Thai masaman peanut curry. I got your classic masaman veggies in it, potato, and roasted peanuts, top of basmati rice. What inspired this dish? Every single day, this is exactly what I eat. Um, <laughs> okay. Whenever I get my paycheck, it all usually goes to the local Thai joint down the street. Presentation-wise, it's impressive. Flavor-wise, he's taking some really big risks. Shrimp, like Mexican food. cream cheese, mint, wonton, curry. None of those things are really supposed to go together. Mm -hmm. All right. It shouldn't work, but it's pretty brilliant. Oh, please. Hmm? That mint plays off of the sweetness of the cream cheese. 
Frying it adds texture. It keeps the moisture inside that shrimp. And to be honest, that cream cheese, it has a nice cooling effect to that beautiful curry. Very nicely done. Thank you. Good job. Curry's delicious. Thank you. And this? <sighs> Honestly, Dino, it's exactly like you. It's so wrong, it's right. Do you know I mean? That's the weird thing about it, because the flavor combination One. is quite on point. I love the curry. The curry is the essence for me. Seasoned beautifully, not too rich, not too hot. That is delicious. Good job. Thank you, Chef. Thank you. Good job, Dino. Nice job, the second dish that we'd like to examine further. This dish has an amazing balance of flavors. It's time to see if this home cook can win their third mystery box challenge. Please step forward. Dumplings again. Go, Jason. Go, Jason. Go, Jason. I'm so excited. I'm in the top three. Yet again in the MasterChef kitchen. And this one means the world to me. I've represented my Asian American heritage in a strong way. Jason, talk to me about the dish, what's in it? I have for you today a preparation of two different dumplings. The first one is pork with cilantro and Chinese chives. The second one is a gyoza style crispy preparation with prawn and pea tendrils, and then a roasted shrimp broth. So why dumplings? For me, dumplings are a reminder of my grandmother. I really wanted to honor her. You know, growing up, they fled from China to Taiwan mm -hmm. um, because of the um, communist revolution. She didn't have a lot of money, so dumplings was a way to, um, sorry, dumplings was a way to just feed a family. So I wanted to take that humble beginning and elevate it for you today. Well, you know, Jason, food is very intimate, especially when you share with others. So thank, thank you, you for that, okay? All right, pork. Okay, stop blaming it. Your pork is extremely Jesus flavorful. Thank you. It's herbaceous. What's moist is flavorful. Now this one with the prawns, beautiful crust on the outside. What did you cook um, it? It was browned in oil a little bit, right. and then I put some water in to steam it and then crisped it back up. That is delicious. Thank you. The overall flavor of each dumpling is there. I like the fact that you went with something that's very personal to you. If I were to do something different, the broth is good. I, it just it needs some more punch. It needs sure. lime. It needs something. But great dumplings. Thank well you done, much. Jason. Thank you. This pan-seared dumpling is just stuffed full of that delicious prawn. Love the pea shoots in there. I think it gives a really nice freshness and earthiness. <laughs> There's very little, I think, to critique on this dish. Everything is great. The broth tastes delicious, and I think it was pretty successful. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. And I guess the final dish we'd like to take a much closer look at. Interesting, this one. This individual made as a dish that played to a family connection. Please, step up. Jeff. Really? Let's go. My brother-in-law would be so proud of me right now. This dish right here, full of flavor and full of family pride. Jeff. Uh, that looks beautiful. Describe the dish, please. I actually cooked my take on a Vietnamese pho. You have a beef broth, traditional pho noodles, a pork meatball that I had made up, sliced filet mignon, and then the traditional toppings, bean sprouts, the jalapeno, and the peppers to give it a little bit of color. It's my homage to my brother-in-law. Your brother-in-law's from Vietnam? His family is. He's, His family. He's born stateside. Right. Visually, it looks beautiful. It smells uh, incredible. And the cook on the protein, you've kept Perfect it quite then. rare? Yes, quite rare, so that way then the broth would really take some of that flavor to it there. Mm. Looks good, but... Pork, delicious, beef, seasoned beautifully. Beef the spice in that broth, you've nailed it. You're shining. That's pretty obvious. The only issue I've got mm -hmm. could have done with more protein, less noodles. Okay. But here's the thing, it's cooked beautifully. It's a bloody good effort. Thank you. Thank you. Look, man, the broth, flavorful. Deep, rich, and then the uh, filet mignon. What's not to like about that, right? Mm -hmm. Needs a little ratio adjustment. Gordon's no. absolutely right. Too much noodles, but other than that, I think you did a great job, and I think your brother-in-law would be very proud of you. Thank you very much.
Thank you. Okay. Yep. Dina, Jason, and Jeff. Tonight, three of you presented truly stunning, elevated, Masterchef worthy dishes. But unfortunately, there can only be one winner. The recipient of this game changing advantage. Person is. This guy. Congratulations. Guys. It Dina, can't be Jason. Jason and Jeff, you know there can only be one winner. in a row? It's Dino. The recipient of this incredible game changing advantage. That person is. Dino. 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 Yeah. Oh, Dino. I won it. Baby Zala won. Uh, young man, please come and join us up here right now. Not only did I finally make it to the top three of a mystery box challenge, I won the challenge, and this is a big deal. All of you, please make your way down. Thank you. Let's go. Thank you. All right, Dina, first the good news. You do not have Jesus. to compete in the Elimination Challenge tonight. So you are officially in the top six. Congratulations, Dina. There's one more big advantage, and that advantage involves a series of choices. And the choices you're about to make will directly influence who will be going home tonight. The competition is about to be put in your hands. Give me two seconds. OK. Uh-oh. Oh. oh, Lord. Oh, my goodness. What in the world are they going to let Dino do to us? What in the world on your fucking lips, lady? What the fuck is that? Oh, my goodness. What in the world? She looks like she lit the bottom of a fucking fun dip. The world are oh, they gonna let that, Dino girl? do to us? He's coming. Oh. Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. Pasta. Now, pasta is the staple of Italian cuisine. These six are just a few oh, of the hundreds of varieties of pasta. Here we have an order of difficulty. Pappardelle. Farfalle. Cannelloni. Cavatelli. Tortellini. And of course, egg yolk ravioli. Now, young man, as you probably guessed, these six amazing pastas yeah, are for the six Jordan talented home cooks standing right in front of us. And tonight, they are all going to need to make one of those incredible fresh pastas from scratch and turn it into an incredible MasterChef-worthy dish. Tonight, you decide who will be making which pasta. Understood? Yes, Chef. Dino has the fate of MasterChef in his hands, and we are not the best of friends. I'm so scared right now. I'm so scared right now. Now, let's start off with the simplest. Dino, who would you like to assign Pappardelli? What even is that? I've seen this person fail on a meat challenge before. If the stress of baking perfect pasta wasn't hard enough, I think finding a sauce for this is a lot harder than it seems. So uh, I'm going to go with Jason. Well, thank you. I know that I have the easiest pasta to make today, so I have to elevate it by making it more high end, maybe adding flavoring to the pasta. The this is going to be a challenge for me. Up next, who do you want to sign the farfalle to? So this is a sort of a different type of strategy. I'm not really trying to get rid of this person. Those look easy, I'd like though. to see this person get a little farther because I'd like to take this person out in the finale. Ebony. Have you lost your mind, Dina? If I had the opportunity to take me out, I would take me out. Boy, I hope you don't think that you can beat me in a head-to-head -head oh. because I would slaughter you and put it all on a plate. Oh, you know, shit. Mama, it's a little harder than it looks to make, so I'm going to try to throw them off. Gabriel. Interesting. Wow. The difficulty level of these pastas is getting serious now, guys. Dino, please pick up that cavatelli. I see this person struggling on not only making this, but what to do with it. OK, baby. The only two home cooks who still have to be allocated their pastas are Jeff and Yoshika. Pastas. The tortellini is just a nightmare. Get that too thick, then it's too chewy and you can't cook it. The egg yolk ravioli, we have seen the most talented, the most determined individuals leave this competition through that. Dino, tell me which of these two home cooks you want to assign the tortellini. Jeff, no, no, Jeff, no, Jeff, yeah, yeah, you went. So let's confirm this. 
The egg yolk ravioli is going to your beloved Jeff. Why? Not only do you got to make this thin, but when they cut into it, that yolk better run. For days. Yeah, for days. Mr. Cocky over here. We'll see. Don't you worry. <laughs> yeah, baby. I don't think you can sell it. <laughs> <laughs> wait okay, wait and dude. see, baby. Yeah. Wait and see. All right. Come here, baby. Got it. Come here. Here. Oh. You're gonna break it, buddy. Here. Grab, break it. Grab the thing. Grab the thing. Grab the thing. I'm gonna break it. Uh, Master Chef Love Fest continues. So, Dina, truthfully, are you sending Jeff home? I'd like to. I think out of all the people here, I'd miss you the least. <laughs> Jeff, how'd you feel? I'm stoked. Are you kidding me? I got the prime one out here to work with. You're not nervous about it a little no. bit? No. If I show any weakness and nervousness, it's gonna show in the dish. And at the end of the day, I got a hard one to work with. So I got to bring my best for it. I've always loved a good challenge. Okay. If I'm going to be the next master chef, I have to push myself. Dino, please head up to the balcony. Hey, don't overcook that rab, all right? Oh, don't you worry. I'll let you have the first slice into it. No, I don't eat crap. This egg yolk ravioli is going to be cooked to perfection just to shut him up. Pasta, this Irish boy is going to show an Italian what it's all about. Sheesh, OK. You six, you'll have 45 minutes He's to cook us over, over, a dish man, with the pasta that Dino assigned you all. Your 45 minutes starts now. <laughs> sorry. Lord, I'm gonna need all the help I can give. He's already in here. In the Vegas pressure test, I had to make pasta on the fly, and it was a complete hot mess. Pasta's the star of the dish. So if it's not perfect, I'm done. Ah, oh, there it is. Woo! OK, baby, what are you making? I am making cavatelli with ricotta, blanched peas, crisp up some prosciutto, and then finish it with some parmigiano reggiano. I made pasta before, and I'm going to really impress the judges and impress Dino with his Italian roots. That's right, baby. Dino had six very important decisions to make tonight. It's very clear who he's going for. The tortellini yep. and the egg yolk ravioli going straight out to Bang. Rashika and Jeff, respectively. I think more importantly, he wants Jeff. Come on, yes, these I two do. have been to each other since day one. Are you mad at me, Jeff? I got a contest I got to win here, buddy. Pasta dough is incredibly tricky when it comes to how much you touch it. You mix it just until it has enough moisture, and then you must let it rest. Bad boy is rich. It's a tough one. All six are intricate and demanding. Guys, 15 minutes gone, just under 30 minutes remaining. Jeff, 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 yes. Jeff. Egg yolk ravioli, the most difficult one. You've got a target on the front and the back oh, of my you. Eyes, Dino yeah. sees me as a threat, a bright, isn't it? as a threat since the beginning. What kind of message do you want to send I like my screen bright, right, right, though. I like that. He's got to stop his yapping because this is a winner right here, baby. Good luck. Thank you so very much. Chica, what's going yeah, on? Yeah. She's fucking handing that machine. Did you get screwed with Jeez. the tortellini or what? I mean, I'm not 100 percent comfortable. I've never made them before, but you know, it's the first time for everything, right? What are you making the tortellini with? Chicken and pork on the inside, and I'm gonna dress the plate with some blister tomatoes, and then I'm gonna top that with a pesto sauce. Why Ooh, chicken? Pesto sauce. Together? That's busting. I wanted to add the chicken in there for a little different flavor. All right, good luck to you. Okay. Thank you. Mmm, that's good. Looking good, Gabe. Gabriel, Remember, yes, Gabe Dino read music, assigned you music music cannelloni the tonight. Yes, sure did. How familiar are you with Italian food? A little bit familiar. It's one of my favorite things to eat, but not something that I actually make quite often. OK. So it's I the last time. Flavors, it's is it, yeah, you can be able to well. read a music through the, the, the pasta. Time, but, uh, you know, I'm not afraid to try my hand at it. OK. Now talk me through what you're working on. So I got a uh, heirloom tomato sauce working right here. OK. And a puree to make it a little bit smoother. OK. And I'm just going to blanch those shells and roll them. And then no stuff them with a ricotta spinach filling. Proved to me you deserve to be in this kitchen. You got it, chef. Let's go. Thank you, chef. Ebony. Yes, chef. Come on, fairly. That means the butterfly pasta. Right. But let's be honest, you sting like a bee, don't you? <laughs> I do. What's the dish? What are you doing? I'm doing the bow tie pasta yes. um, with some pork Italian sausage, and I'm put a little bit of mushroom Good. and spinach in there, Good. and I'm gonna do like a butter sauce to top it. Okay. Great. Now, busy household, mama yeah. four. Tell me about some of the pasta dishes you've got at home. I make the mac and cheese or chicken alfredo. Sounds kind of right. rustic and homey, but it's good. Because usually during the week I'm working, so I don't have a lot oh, of time. Oh, she can sting me, but I think she's got a pasta. Just under seven minutes, guys. 
Jason. Chef Brown, talk to me about what you're making. Today I'm making pappardelle. I'm gonna gussy it up with chanterelles, and then I meet ragu like a bolognese. I love mushrooms, so uh, coming from New England, I go forage for mushrooms in the uh, fall, so this is a bit of Italian meets New England. Jason, we're counting on you. Yes, Chef. All right, talk to you soon. Thank you so much. That's intense. It's getting tough out there, guys. Right now, Jeff and Yashika are running way behind, yep. okay? Yashika has not perfected the art of a tortellini, and Jeff is now rolling fresh pasta out again. Nothing would make Dino happier if either one of them went home. I can do this. I believe in myself. But I'm also equally as worried this about guy. Gabriel. Look at He's him. struggling with the shape of that cannelloni. Ah! How much time I get? Six seconds to go. Oh, come on, guys. Yashika, you gotta push, Mama. Let's go. Remember, when we get to zero, that is the end. Your pasta must be out of your water. Gotta have it on a plate. You gotta have it on a plate. This is it. Hero is the pasta. You gotta move, guys. Ten, nine, nine eight, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. That's the hand in the air. Wow. Unbelievable. Oh, no, Gabriel Six. fucked up. Uh, well done. It's time to see whose dishes will take that us looks oily to as Italy fuck. and whose dish will transport them home. First That's up, not too bad. the man with the biggest target on his back, Jeff. Hi, Jeff. Dino thinks he's going to be sending me home. But that yoke is no joke right here, people. It's going to glisten. It's going to run. I know I nailed it. This guy's weird. Describe the dish, Jeff, please. So what we have here is an egg yolk ravioli that I had done up with a little bit of truffle oil, sage brown butter, and pecorino romano. Wait, it's pierced. Okay, so, truthfully. Wait, it's pierced. Looks a mess. Yeah, it's it's terrible. Two big no-nos, raw sage, shocking. Burnt onion, why would you put that on there? When I was trying to strain it all out, it just kind of came through at the end there. Visual on the actual pasta, you can see that it's sort of crimped. That one, the dough started to dry out a little bit for me. When you got one perfect one, Serve it. Don't put three Jeff, on there, though. Okay. Jeff, as he perfectly sealed, even this, the small, the smallest, and water goes in, what do you think? It's boiling water. It goes into the yolk, and it, it's overcooked. When the it, dough started to it dry out a little bit for me. the yolk inside, dude. When you got one perfect one, serve it. Don't put three we'll on there, though. Okay. Detract from the stunner. Now, I want to slice in there, mm -hmm. and I want to see that oozing out. I'm not convinced. Dino. Yeah, sure. Do you think he nailed it? Not sure. Dude, I'm watching the show, motherfucker. Jesus. Now, I want to slice in there, mm -hmm. and I want to see that oozing out. Dino. Yes, sure. Do you think he nailed it? Not sure. Nah, it, sh it should have already been out, right? Nope. Wow. <laughs> You've nailed it. Oh. Fuck. What happened? What happened? It's not nailed. Delicious. Thank you. What was that camera angle? It's rich. It, lo it looked hard. But pasta could have done with a touch thinner. Okay. Plate is badly dressed. Mm. Tough one. You got given the, the most awkward to nail. Sure. Because the man on the balcony wants you out. And you've nailed it. Thank you, Jeff. Thank you. There's something beautiful about the simplicity of just straightforward pasta with a simple egg yolk that's salted. It just needs more finesse. Sure. But look, man, the difficulty of this, if I were to give a, a, a number on it, it's a 10. So, good job. Okay. Next up, please, Ebony. Come on, girlfriend. Dino gave me farfalle pasta. <laughs> I thought this pasta was gonna be easy. You cut it, you fold it. It's little bow ties. It'll be easy, right? Right. Hold your breath, cause it ain't. Miss Ooh. Ebony, I like give me the a description of the dish oh, real quick. Mama. I did a folly with pork, sausage, mushrooms, spinach, butter, and fried basil. That pasta looks boring. I kind of cooked that down like with on, on garlic, own, kinda... a little bit of thyme, peppercorn, salt and pepper. 
It's delicious. <laughs> okay, dude. Thank you, chef. It's simple. Your pasta's cooked beautifully. There's texture to that pork sausage. There's a little heat. There's a salt. There's a sweetness to it. I don't think you need the mushrooms. XQCL. Maybe just some beautiful red chili flakes on top just to bring a little color to the top there. Yes, That's chef. a delicious bowl of pasta. Thank nice you. Job. Why the sausage? Um, I just was trying to go with something that I know I could pack a lot of flavor into it. Mm, that is delicious. The sheen on there, it's got all the little dregs of sauce, ground sausage, and that spicy sauce. You've nailed it. All my pasta is beautifully glazed, and nothing's dry. Oh, it's so good. Uh, here's the thing. Flavor's there. Presentation needs work. But for me, one of the best tasting dishes so far in this competition. Really? Thank you, Thank Chef. You. Chef Emery. Oh, my god. Next up, please, Gabriel. Bye, Gabe. Bye, Gabe. Gabriel. Working fast food, I don't make a lot of money, so I'm not going to spend money on upscale Italian cuisine. My inexperience with cannelloni really worked against me because I'm not happy with the shape. I'm not happy with the structure of the pasta. I'm just hoping that the flavors are there. Gabriel. Yes, Let chef. me see. What do we have? We have a uh, cannelloni that was <laughs> stuffed with a ricotta spinach filling topped with a rustic tomato sauce and some fresh grated cheese. Have you ever cooked cannelloni before? Never before, chef. This is not what it's supposed to look like. It doesn't look that bad, but I mean, the shape is kind of weird, though. I'm not happy with it. It looks deflated they be and sad. Tubes yep. Where your cannelloni look like they've been deflated. Yes, chef. Whatever you choose to stuff that cannelloni with, it needs to be firm. It needs to be able to hold its shape. How did you season that filling? I seasoned it with a little bit of spinach and then some salt and pepper and um, a slight amount of the ground nutmeg. Filling's not great. I wish it had more seasoning. That sauce, it's a tad sweet, but the real disappointment as you already know, is the technique of that pasta, because that's really what we're after tonight. Yes, chef. Oh, yeah, he's kind of clapped here. It looks dreadful. I mean, it looks kind of defeated. I mean, hand on heart, that looks like a lasagna, yeah, as okay. opposed to cannelloni. Which is a little bit kind of the goal of a cannelloni. The sauce, like, it's so sweet, it's extraordinary. While it was cooking down, it didn't seem as though it was really being as pungent, so I just added a little bit of sugar to try to bring it up a little bit more. What happens to tomatoes the more you caramelize them? They, they get sweeter. They get sweeter. So you started them off with sugar and then got them even sweeter in the cooking process. Sugar? The filling, bland. Or is it? Pasta is a sugar. disaster. It's your worst performing dish, Gabriel. Thank you. <clears throat> Miss Kate. Please bring your dish down. I was in music. This is definitely the hardest elimination yeah, challenge man. I have had in this kitchen. I've never made cavatelli before, but I've had a similar dish like this at a restaurant in Chicago, and the flavors just work so well together. Kate, okay, talk to me about your dish. What's in it? I made cavatelli with peas and mint and a homemade herb ricotta. Peas and mint, I love that. It's a very traditional parent. I really like the garnish. It looks refreshing, but... Having two cheeses, the Parmesan and the ricotta playing together make a lot of sense. And you were very heavy-handed with the amount of peas, which is a good thing. They're cooked al dente. I wish the pasta was done a little bit better. It's a little gummy. It's a little thick. Yeah. But overall, it's a very good dish. Wait, hey, motherfucker! Chef. I thought you just said it. It's a technique in the pasta what we're looking for. He says something good about the entire dish and says that the pasta's dog shit. And she gets plus points? Fuck you, man. What is this show, bro? What Visually, is this, what's going on here? the dish is beautiful. There's rustic elegance to it. Yeah. Peas. Tastes delicious. Ricotta. Nice flavor. Brother. But this is a light dish, right? It's meant to be celebratory of spring. I would just love to see that sauce brighter and lighter and celebratory of that cavatelli pasta. Thank you, chef. Nice shot, Kate. Whatever, dude. Please, Jason, bring your dish down. It's gonna be dog shit. I've never made popper deli from scratch before, but I have a lot of food knowledge. I've been to Rome with my brother, tasted lots of local things, so I know which flavors go well together. My popper deli is gonna be a ticket to the balcony. Jason. Yes, chef. 
Oh, Talk yeah, to sure. me about your yeah, dish, what's in it? Surely. This is a pappardelle uh, with my version of a bolognese. I used half beef a and bolognese. half pork. The pasta has a little bit of porcini powder in there. And this over here? This is a little bit more of the bolognese sauce. The parpadetti, visually, it looks spot on. Thank you. Let's get in here, buddy. Bolognese takes like fucking like five hours to make or something. The flavor's dynamite. She likes it. There's no way around it. I feel that it has that depth of flavor that a bolognese it should have. It tastes, it tastes a like it's been cooked like a for hours. It's, it's that's a great whole point thing. Of it. Isn't it? The pasta, spot on. I think you went overboard hours. with the aromatic spices. Hours. Okay. Overall, good job, Jason. Thank you. At least three hours, at least. Thank you. Next up, Yoshika, please. Let's go. Come on, Yoshika. Dino gave me the second hardest pasta, and it can be so, so tricky to get this time. Every time Chad says I'm right, so I'm right. Pasta right. But I know that my tortellini is beautiful. The shape is perfect. Describe the dish, please. It is a tortellini with chicken and pork and a little bit of ricotta mixture inside, served with a chicken broth, busted tomatoes, and garnished with just That's a tad a bit of... wonton soup, bro. Traditionally, I know it's generally served with pork, and I just wanted to add a little chicken to go with the uh, the broth that I was serving with it. Scuff wonton. She gets terrible. So I tasted it. I thought it was pretty tasty to me. And what, what bit did you think was pretty tasty? I thought the filling tasted well, and the broth was nice and rich and deep. Where's she gone? It's terrible. Chicken and pork, the most ridiculous ideas to put together. True. The thickness of the tortellini is terrible. Was well, that like a sausage? A canned food. And it's got no texture, it's got no flavor, and you serve it in a stock that looks like it's come out the bottom of a dishwasher. <laughs> I think the only saving grace tonight is the actual shape of the tortellini. You've sort of done a pretty decent job. Yes, she can. Yes. Dino wanted you out. I don't want you to leave this competition, but I'm gonna be honest with you, I think it's your worst performing dish that you've cooked for us so far. Shit, man. At, at least not granddad's flip-flops, that's for sure. Well done, all that. of you. Um, tough, tough, tough challenge. Let's get that right. Dino, please, make your way down. Thank you. At this point in the competition, they are definitely people I really want to see go home right now based on, you know, skills. And I think my strategy paid off. Let's get straight to the good news. There were two extraordinary dishes out there tonight. The first dish, congratulations, Jason. Thank Jason. you. Good job. Nice job, Jason. Good job, Jason. The winning dish of the night, congratulations, Ebony. Yeah. But, yeah. Job, Way to go, baby. Ebony. Oh, well you. done. Good job. Unfortunately, home cooks, this is an elimination challenge. And at least one home cook has to leave the kitchen tonight. If I say your name, please come down to the front. Yashika and Gabriel. You two, this is one of the toughest decisions we've ever had to make. We felt yes, she, that yeah, both for of sure. you, not only were you so strong, but were going further. Yes, she, but unfortunately, gone. both of you fell it. short with too many technical errors across both dishes. Guys, pork chicken the in a cook cook off. Fuck off. That is leaving tonight. That person is. Yeshikia. Yes, Gabriel, I'm sorry, bud. What? <gasps> No, it's baby. Yashika, say goodbye to Gabriel and head back to your station, please. <laughs> Gabriel, unfortunately, young man, you were beaten by the technical huh? ability of your cannon only tonight. You know, I've got news for you. You may be going back to Oklahoma tonight, but you are not going back to be a fast food server. Young man, it's very rare we see such raw talent that's got amazing potential come through Please, this competition. Obvious. You've got the potential to be huge in this industry. Bruh, my girls cooked a fucking, a, a, a pork and chicken fake sausage in some dog shit wrapper put into, dude, WD-40 sauce. What is wrong right with training. you? So I am personally Man, gonna send dying. you to culinary school. 
No shot. Oh, fuck the contest, then. Thank you, Lord. I'll pay That's a real... the tuition full time. Oh, my goodness. And I don't want you worrying about mum and dad, because I'm taking care of that. Thank you. If this is how good you are without proper training, young man, at 19 years of age, let me tell you, you've this, got the potential this, this to, guy went, to be great. More than this show. Will you accept that offer? Hell yeah, sure. Gabriel, you might be going back to Oklahoma to take Chef Gordon's once-in-a-lifetime offer, but after that, I want you to leave Oklahoma and come to New Orleans. All right! Because I'm prepared Legit. to offer you My God. a job in one of my restaurants. And then when you're done, New Orleans, well, I want you to come back to my home, like, fuck, you my, my God, oh, yes, yes. bang, 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 the boys are going. Gabriel, I want to know how you feel now. All I've wanted to do is, is learn Jesus. and cook, and I get to do both of them under tutelage from two people that I've admired since I was like seven, so I can't, I can't be happier. XQCL Komodo High. <laughs> wow. Hey, come on up here. You're amazing, yeah. Gabriel. Yeah. Gabriel. Thank you, sir. I'm gonna take good care of you, okay? Chat, so chat, chat. Not to worry. Chat. All right. Some of the winners get like five years of subscription to a magazine. My my man's loses, and he, and he gets so impressed. Tuition, job, now, career. Now, take that apron off. I look forward Shit, to seeing you soon. Brother. No question. Thank you. Go get it. I'm not going back to fast food. I'm not going back to my regular routine. I'm changing my life, and that is all thanks to MasterChef and what the judges have presented me. My parents have always struggled. They don't make a lot of money, so Chef Ramsey offering to pay for my culinary school and telling me not. He being the best chef in Oklahoma. That's insane, man. I didn't know people actually cooked in Oklahoma. That's, that's the stress wicked. about my parents is a huge relief because they are the main people that I, I care no. about, love, and respect. I'm so happy for you. <laughs> On top of that, I get to go and experience this amazing food scene and this amazing restaurant that Chef Sanchez wants to put me at. To me, that's the world. That's the jackpot. The trophy's shiny, but this is amazing. Yay. Yay.